Today we are going to talk about the organization of matter. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to talk about what is the definition of matter. So anything that has volume or takes up space has matter. So we don't always think of it, but like the air around us actually is matter. For example, if I took a plastic bag and I kind of swung it around and then tightened up the bag, I would capture air in that bag. And so even though gas is somewhat invisible or is not very heavy, it still has matter. And so if you look at the diagram, we have three states or phases of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. And then there's also some other ones that we find in space. One you might have heard of is plasma. And so our definition of matter is, is anything that does have volume or takes up space, has mass, means that it has matter. And so if we now talk about the way that matter is broken down, is it's broken down into whether it's a pure substance or a mixture. So first of all, an element is something that is found on the periodic table of elements. Compound are elements that are bonded together. Both of those things are considered pure substances because they can't be broken down any further without changing into something different. So for example, gold, silver, platinum, those are all examples of elements. A compound would be something like water. So even though water is made out of two H's and an O, the reason why it's a pure substance is because they are bonded together. So if we have H2O and then we have H2O2, even though they're both made out of hydrogen and oxygen, one is water, one is hydrogen peroxide. They are a pure substance because if you change them, they change into something different. The other type of matter are what we call mixtures, and we classify these as homogeneous and heterogeneous. Mixtures are when you have two things that are just that, they're mixed together. A homogeneous mixture is where you cannot see the individual parts that make it up. A heterogeneous mixture is where you can see the different parts that make it up. And so easy examples that we can talk about are different types of ice cream. So the prefix homo means same. So a homogeneous mixture, ice cream, would be like vanilla, chocolate. A heterogeneous mixture, ice cream, would be like cookie dough, cookies and cream. Ones where you can see the different parts that make them up. And so those are the different phases of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, and there are others, and then how we further classify matter. And then also there's these nice diagrams to describe with these colors different elements or different substances that might be combined. So here's kind of a, a flow chart that can help us out also. So first of all, if it can be separated, that means that it is a mixture. If the mixture is uniform, that means that it's homogeneous, meaning you can't see the difference. If it's not, then we have a heterogeneous mixture. If it can't be separated, that means that it's a pure substance. If it is already broken down by chemical means, that means that it's an element. But if it can be broken down further, then it's a compound. So technically, I could separate water into its different elements. I could separate the C's and the O's in a carbon dioxide, although it's very difficult to do. They're still pure substances, even though they are elements that are combined together. So let's further classify pure substances, because this is where students get mixed up. So first of all, I think most people get the idea of elements. It is one thing. Um, we have a chart. There's 120 plus, and it's always changing different elements. They have their own symbol. They have their own um, atomic number, atomic mass. And so we look at the periodic table, the C's, the H's, the N's, you know, choose a letter, and there's probably something that, that goes with it. Those can't be broken down any further without changing what element you're dealing with. Copper, gold, tin, aluminum are the ones that are highlighted in this presentation. A compound is when you have two elements and the key is they're bonded together in a certain ratio. So we mentioned water, H2O. I can't make water H3O. I can't make it H4O. 
water is H2O. And it, without, uh, if I change the chemistry, then I have something different. So properties might change based on what I have with element ratios. So water, H2O, is very good for life. It's very good for living things. H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, is not good for living things in high amounts. Same thing with CO2 and CO, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. One is much more poisonous than the other. And so our examples of compounds are salt, NaCl. So yes, there's two elements, but they're bonded together. Sugar, it's made out of CHO. Yeah, they're different elements, but again, the key is that they are bonded together, and that's what makes them a pure substance. So mixtures, they can vary with two or more things put together. Sometimes they can be chemically bonded, sometimes not so much. And depending on their properties, you might have a homogeneous or a heterogeneous mixture. So a homogeneous is evenly mixed throughout. You can't see the difference. So for example, contact solution, even though there's some salts and there's some other things that are in there, you can't see the difference. Lemonade or Kool-Aid would also be an example of that if it's mixed thoroughly. Um, and so those are homogeneous. Homo, same. It looks the same throughout. Heterogeneous is where you can see the different parts. It's not evenly mixed. So salads, chili, pizza, the ice cream that we talked about, where you can see the different parts or you could pick them out, those are all examples of heterogeneous mixtures. Rocks, like granite, would be a heterogeneous mixture. But some rocks, let's say like limestone, would be a homogeneous mixture. And so we just see how the properties uh, are different between them. And so oftentimes we will show you these diagrams where different circles mean how many elements there are. Different colors also mean different elements. So for example, with elements, you can have one that's orange. Let's say that that's like pure carbon. And then let's say in the blue, you have hydrogen. So hydrogen is usually find, found excuse me, as H2, and they're bonded together. There's still elements. Even though this one is bonded with the other, it's still the same element. Compounds, again, we're looking at definitely two elements that are bonded together. So here you see a 2 to 1 ratio. This would be like water. Here you're seeing a 1 to 1 ratio. This would be like carbon monoxide. And then when you look at this illustration, you're seeing compounds. You're seeing, in this picture, you're seeing different elements mixed together. Here you have diatomic elements mixed with compounds. Here you have elements, diatomic elements, and you have compounds. So we use these diagrams to kind of help visualize when sometimes in words it's a little bit harder to understand. So that's our introduction to how we organize matter.